In this video, we're going to cover two topics. In the first topic, I will explain the difference between Eulerian and Lagrangian formulations for balance equations. In the second topic, I will present the mass balance in continuum mechanics. In solid mechanics, we are always concerned with two configurations. Or most of the time, we are concerned with two configurations. A reference configuration, whose coordinates are fixed, and a deformed configuration that moves in space with time. Different physical quantities can be written in terms of the spatial coordinates, small x's, or the material coordinates, capital X's. Balance equations, for example, mass and equilibrium, are used to formulate differential equations that govern the behavior that we are attempting to model. We could be uh, looking at velocity, stresses, strains, uh, mass exchange, temperature, energy, etc. The balance differential equations can naturally be written in terms of the spatial position. For example, we have this phi function of the spatial position x. In this case, the formulation is termed Eulerian formulation. Eulerian formulation is analogous to having a fixed window in space and watching the physical quantities pass through that window. It is sometimes simpler to write the equations in terms of the reference coordinates, capital X. In this case, the formulation is termed Lagrangian formulation. Lagrangian formulation is analogous to having a fixed window on the material or object and watching the physical quantities pass through that window. The figures below help to visualize the difference between a spatial and referential distributions of a quantity. The figures show the density at time zero, that's the first figure. During the formation of the object, the value changes throughout the material. So you can see here the, the, the contour plot. At this corner, it is increasing. We can choose to fix the coordinates as the reference coordinates and plot the distribution. So the distribution of the density is plotted on the original shape. If we write the equations of equilibrium inside this window, they would be considered Lagrangian formulation. If, on the other hand, we choose to describe everything in terms of the spatial position, so here, that's the actual spatial position um, at time t, we get this third picture. If we write the equations of equilibrium inside this window, they would be considered Eulerian formulation. We are now going to present the mass balance equations in both Eulerian and Lagrangian formulations. Let's consider a reference configuration denoted by omega naught. The original density is the mapping function that maps every material point to a real value. As time evolves, the object or the continuum that we're modeling could be moving in space such that the local density is changing. In that case, the density as time changes is denoted rho t and provides the density for every material point x at time t. Let's assume a deformation function, small x. The deformation gradient is equal to f and j, which is the determinant of f, relates the volume in the deformed configuration to the volume in the uh, undeformed configuration. In the deformed configuration, the density is function of the spatial position x and time t. We wish to write the relationship between those densities. We are now going to employ the physics equations. Given a constant mass, the ratios of the densities are related to the ratios of the volume such that the density, the spatial density, 
is equal to the density um, rho sub t and the only difference is a simple change of uh, variables rho is function of small x rho sub t is function of capital X the original density however is related to the spatial density by the ratios of the volumes rho naught is equal to rho multiplied by j If one wishes to calculate the total mass, the original mass can be calculated by integrating the original density over the reference configuration. The total mass at any point can be calculated by integrating the spatial density over the deformed configuration. We can replace the integration over the deformed configuration with the integration over the reference configuration by observing that small dx which is a French, uh, 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 the, the, the differential volume in the deformed configuration is equal to J multiplied by a capital DX, which is the differential volume in the undeformed configuration or the reference configuration. Employing this physics and assuming that the mass is constant throughout the motion, we retrieve the relationship between the densities rho naught is equal to rho multiplied by g. We are now going to write the continuity equation which describes how the densities change with respect to time. First recall the equation that relates g dot, the rate of change of the volume, with the trace of the velocity gradient, trace l, which will be used in developing the continuity equation. First, assuming that the mass is constant, we can then state that the original density never changes. Therefore, the material time derivative of the density or the original density is zero. And here we use capital D to indicate a Lagrangian formulation. Alternatively, we can replace rho naught with rho sub t multiplied by j. And we're going to keep the dependence on the reference coordinates, uh, uh, capital X. This results in this equation. To take the time derivative, the material time derivative of D with, res uh, with respect uh, or D rho T uh, DT, that is equal to partial rho T by partial T multiplied by G plus uh, rho T multiplied by uh, uh, J dot and j dot here, we are going to use j trace l to replace it. And since j is always equal, uh, greater than zero, we can uh, remove j from the equations by dividing by j, and hence we end up with this equation, which is the continuity equation in the Lagrangian formulation. Alternatively, we can choose to write the equations in terms of small x. So instead of rho naught as a function of capital X, we're going to replace it with rho uh, as a function of small x and t and j. d rho j by dt is equal to zero. And we're using small d to indicate uh, material time derivative and Eulerian formulation. To obtain the material time derivative of the density, we first take the partial derivative of the density with respect to time plus partial the, the density with respect to x multiplied by the velocity. This is the material time derivative of the density. All this multiplied by j plus rho multiplied by uh, dj by dt, which is j dot. And we're going to use this equation again to replace j, j dot with j trace l. We are, can uh, further simplify this equation using some of the equations developed in the vector calculus equations. And we end up with the following uh, equation. The continuity equation in an Eulerian formulation 
when the mass is preserved is equal to partial rho by partial t plus the divergence of the vector rho v. Basically, this equation states that the rate of change of the spatial density is according to the speed and density of materials moving through space. If we substitute j dot equals 0 and j is equal to 1 for an isochoric motion, such as incompressible fluids, we retrieve the famous incompressible fluid continuity equation, which basically states that trace L is equal to 0. Trace L is the trace of the velocity gradient, partial v1 by partial x1, partial v2 by partial x2, and partial v3 by partial x3.